born in Accra, Ghana. He now lives in New York. Brooklyn sometimes. How would you like to describe yourself? Um, I'm an artist, you know. Um, I'm an African artist. Simple. The most memorable review. Share it with us. Is it good? Is it bad? What? Mediocre? Where? No, it's horrible. Good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you really remember the, the good ones because you're like, it's supposed to be good. You know, but um, I remember it was for Native Son, and the album had come out, and a lot of people have written really amazing things about it. So, you know, we were on this cloud, and uh, my manager in Europe um, said, um, you got a review in the UK, but I'm not going to send it. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. I, I got to know. Are, are they feeling it? Is it bad? Is it good? He said, oh, you know what? Just check your email. This guy said, it burns my heart to think of it. He said that the album sounded like a kid playing with kitchen utensils. No, he didn't end there. He said that you could not tell where the hip hop's begun and the African elements I was trying to combine ended. And I was like, but that was the point. It was supposed to be like mixed up real nice. But that was it. it you was obviously horrible. hadn't heard of fusion. Yeah. Oh, that's really painful. Yeah. Ow. I feel that. Yeah. I, I cut it out. It's it's on my wall. Oh my goodness. Yeah. All right. So um <laughs> was there ever a time when you weren't convinced you were gonna be a musician? Yeah, several times. Like it happens now. Yeah. You know, where you, you what, kinda what wanna pushes quit. you to that point where you're like, I don't know if I'm gonna keep this up. I mean, the main challenge is if you're being understood, you know, and you, you put so much work into what you do, seldom get paid what you deserve for it, and um, you're thinking, I mean, I went to college, I could do other things, you know, um, but I think the thing that keeps me going is understanding that the African narrative is one that um, is seldom heard, and you know, a lot of us, even you know, a lot of us in this room as well, uh, we're pioneers in the sense that we are leading a charge that we might never get real glory for. Um, but it's important work because others coming will have a platform on which they can stand. So that's really what's kept me going. So obviously, some idiot review in the UK had no idea what fusion was about bringing music in and, and making that mix happen, hip hop and African elements. Yep. You're going to show us how that works, right? What's down there? See the balls. A man with balls, always <laughs> a good thing. <coughs> it's the British side of me, I'm sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> so double entendre, I did that for the ambassador. Uh, these are called koshka um, back in Ghana. They, they, they refer to them in different, different names, depending on where you are. Um, but my, my journey as a musician has always been um, trying to figure out what I could contribute, specifically to hip hop. And in that regard, a lot of it was about uh, rhythm mm. and um, time signature. So not to get like super deep or complex, um, most of hip hop music is on the 4-4 beat. So it's easy, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Mm, 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 mm. We all know that, right? Yeah. And um, most of African rhythms, um, traditional rhythms, I should say, are more like a six eight. So it's like a one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? So when I started rhyming, um, all, I've, all I was doing was just following the, the four four structure of making music. So, and a lot of it was really just. Um, taking other people's rhymes, right? So this is uh, this is how this works, by the way. <laughs> All right. So one, two, three, four, right? So it's super basic, right? Um, anybody know Biggie? Yeah. Okay, 
So like that was like one of like my first like like verbatim rhymes like in '94. Like that's you know. So I'm gonna do it. Some of you may know it. Some of you may not. <laughs> um, it's like. Who the F is this? Paging me a 546 in the morning. Crack a dawn and now I'm yawning. Wipe the cold out my eye. See who's this paging me and why? It's my man Pop from the barbershop. Told me he was in the gambling spot. Heard the intricate plot. People want to stick me like fly paper neighbor. Slow down, love. Please chill, drop the caper. Remember them? It's up the hill up in Brownsville. That you roll dice with smoke blunts and got nice wet. Yeah, my man Fame up in Prospect. Yeah, them I think it's not love or disrespect. I didn't say damn. School me to some profits that you knew from back when. When you were clocking minor figures. Now they heard you blowing up like nitro, and you get the picture. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so like, you know, this is like, so you know. So Blitz, so I love how you did the radio play version for us. Thank yes. you. I'm like, phew. Edit. No, no, no. I like it. <laughs> no, I, I could Live radio play version. <laughs> Yikes. I had to edit it, you Thank know, because, because, you. you know, my mom would. These are nice people here. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but also. Um, you know, what was happening at the time is, you know, a lot of us didn't have access to instrumentals. You know, this is before CDs were very popular and they would release a single with the instrumental. And even if they did, I didn't have a disc. I was like Walkman era. Um, yellow one, by the way. I never had one. I always hoped I'll get one, but it never happened. So these were like how, you know, I memorized rhymes. You know what I mean? Coming up with these rhythms and memorizing. So when I kind of time went on, got more comfortable in my style and in my understanding of kind of rhythm and what was important was trying to figure out what I could contribute. So then I start thinking to myself, how about the six eight that I've always known, you know? And so particularly when I was working on Native Son, the one that the guy completely destroyed, um, kitchen utensil album, um, that's kind of when I started thinking, how do I bring the six eight idea? So um, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Oh. Ambassadors back in the killing it. Reflection of the lights in the pyramids. Remember who you are when you hear it. We time traveling back in the time in the seven to that international flow with a banging instrumental. Revolutionary is intercontinental. We on another level, never meddle with the devil when we go in the battle. And you know we never settle. Bow down to the high power, all down to the last hour. Way of the righteous might just be another light in the path to remind us. Oshun, Ogun, Eshu, Obatala, Yeshu, Vudun, Allah, Yamaya, Shango, Yehovah, Yahweh, Jah, whoever you pray to. Bow to the most high. Bow to the most high. Bow to the most high. About to the mo you get the picture. Um, so, so um, it's a lot more complex, uh -huh. uh, you know, in terms of rhythmically and kind of where to put. Is your it harder to, to work with six eight than four four? I believe so. Yeah. You saw me struggling, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. I thought I thought it was taking you a while, but I didn't want to mention it. <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're with you though. We're we're rooting for you. Um, so why do the harder version? Because I think hip hop needs it. And I think that our people back home are connected to hip hop in a way that we've never been connected to any other music in the diaspora as we have. Mm. And I think that it's important that, you know, there's a call and there's a response. And when we were home and we heard hip hop, at least the version that we heard was extremely powerful coming from the public enemies and the KRS ones. And they were connected to us, whether it was um, through aesthetic, the African medallions, always wanted one, by the way. The dashikis, we could get that at home. Um, but you know, like that was all important because we could see them and we could see ourselves in it. And I think that um, it's been 30 years since the culture kind of proliferated that way, and a lot of us are beginning to speak back. And so not just verbally, I think that we should contribute to the culture in other ways, artistically and aesthetically as well. See, when one culture takes another culture, sometimes it's known as cultural appropriation. Can Africans do that with African Americans' culture? I mean, or is it just like recycling it back? I think, I think again, hip hop, unlike a lot of other music forms, you know, it's in and of itself, it's super inclusive. Mm. I mean, first of all, think about the fact that the godfather of the culture is an immigrant from Jamaica, um, DJ Kuhark. 
If he never brought sound system culture to the Bronx, we wouldn't have hip hop. Mm. So the culture in and of itself is very rooted in, in and it's also sampling culture, sure. which is another very important piece because it's bits and pieces of a lot of different uh, cultures and ideas. Mm. Um, and so I think it's fair, but more importantly, I think that we need more things that connect us as a diaspora. Um, and it's very important that if hip hop works, we do need to use it to conversate and have some of these, 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 these talks about how we get together again. You worked your butt off editing something down for us. I did. Yeah. What was it? <laughs> um, it's, it's, what is it? It, it is um, my film, Native Son. You know, some of you have seen it. It's really long, so I didn't, I didn't want to bore some of you. So um, I, I, broke, I broke it down. But I also um, have another piece called Juju Girl in it. And it's my, you know, for me, visual aesthetic, it's very important in music, I believe. Um, a lot of my work, well, first I started as a visual artist. Mm. Before I ever got into music, I was drawing and then, you know, so film for me has been a very important medium um, in which I could communicate what I couldn't communicate sonically. And so making films was kind of a natural project, uh, pro projection, projection, progression, I'm sorry. I love this audience, they're so oh, helpful. Oh, come on. Where were you when I, when I can't remember words? Like, just, just come with there me, come with me in my life. Um, so, so, you know, it, it's been kind of the natural thing to do, and these films have kind of um, helped me explain more what I couldn't explain musically. So, it's a montage. Do we need to understand a narrative when we're watching this? Not really. It's just beautiful pictures. That's to watch. what I thought, but I didn't want to say it. Okay. All right. You introduce it. All right. So, this is uh, Native Son and Juju Girl. And it, uh, the first song, actually, that plays on it is uh, one of the six, eight pieces. So you get to hear it without me gasping for air. <laughs> Word. Take a look.